Phil Schneider's Dulce Base Delusion. As I stated elsewhere many times before, I am a firm believer in the reality of the UFO phenomenon and that the phenomenon seems to continue to be reported from time to time, even in places like Dulce, New Mexico, which is no exception. As of yet, we do not know the true nature of this strange phenomenon. But I do not believe in the fabricated tales of con artist Phil Schneider and his claims about the Dulce base, whose physical existence has never been proven beyond a shadow of doubt. The numerous lies and fabrications of Phil Schneider are so multiple and so atrocious that they need to be exposed. There is a website called Phil Schneider Memorial. They are actually calling it a website for a murdered patriot. If Phil Schneider is a patriot of anything, he is a patriot of disinformation. He started giving lectures from 1995, mainly among survival groups. He usually started off his talks by saying that the major reason for going public was that his best friend, Ron Rommel, was murdered in a park and had been in the Air Force as an intelligence agent. Ron Rommel had never been in the Air Force, as far as we know. Rommel was found in a park in Portland in 1993. The police had determined that he had committed suicide by shooting himself in the mouth with a pistol on August 6, 1993. Ron, Philip, and five other individuals had been collaborating on a little magazine called the Alien Digest. It was starting to get a fairly wide circulation when Ron was found in the park. Phil Schneider with his one-track conspiracy mindset, immediately decided that his friend had been murdered. Because this story was posted when the internet was just beginning in the early 1990s, it has taken on a life of its own and had been copied and circulated over and over. Circular knowledge is not knowledge at all. It is just repeating what someone else says. By the way, the proof of Schneider's lies lies in the math. Take Phil's age and his time on various jobs he claimed to do. Certainly try and consider time at college for his supposed degrees, which never existed anyway. So scratch the college time and you'll see that he would have been 17 years old when he went to work for the government. Phil stated that he worked in Dulce in 1979. He claimed he was one of three people to survive the 1979 firefight between the Greys and the U.S. intelligence and military at the Dulce underground base. Phil was found dead in January of 1996, supposedly due to what some one-track conspiracy-minded folks like to claim as an execution-style murder. The Clackamas County Coroner's Office finally concluded that it was suicide. Schneider was not murdered. Schneider had suffered from multiple physical illnesses, brittle bone syndrome, osteoporosis, cancer, and self-inflicted injuries. He had intense chronic pain all of the time. But above all, Phil Schneider suffered from self-inflicting, self-mutilating psychological disorder, mental instability, and elusive illness. An autopsy was performed at the Multnomah County Medical Examiner's Office in Portland, Oregon by Dr. Gunson, and she determined that Philip had committed suicide by wrapping a rubber catheter hose three times around his neck and half knotting in front. The late Gabe Valdez, who was the state patrol officer in charge of the Dulce area for many years, also stated that Schneider's death was a suicide after examining the autopsy report. An excellent book was written by Gabe Valdez's son, Greg Valdez, in which he exposed Phil Schneider as a fraud. Here's a quote from Greg Valdez. Cynthia Schneider Dreher was the person who actually came up with the murder theory. Cynthia didn't get this idea from actual evidence, but from her mother who had a psychic vision and concluded that Phil was murdered. Cynthia also claimed that her dad, Frank Martin, was killed in Albuquerque in 1952 as part of another conspiracy involving the government. 
Her inconsistent story also claimed that Phil's hands were tied when he was found dead and then later claimed they were by his side. Her story has many inconsistencies, making Phil's involvement in Dulce extremely unlikely and not credible. Cynthia Dreyer quickly started requesting money in her correspondence with Gabe Valdez because she claimed Phil did not have life insurance. Cynthia had provided much of the rumors about Phil. There are claims that Phil was killed with piano wire, but the autopsy report clearly indicates that he died with surgical tubing around his neck. The piano wire theory was part of the psychic vision and not actual evidence. Take caution with any website or person claiming he was killed with piano wire because he was not." Unquote. Phil Schneider did not tell his bogus story till 1995. Phil had never even heard of Project Gas Buggy. Above is the schematic drawing of Project Gas Buggy conducted by the Atomic Energy Commission on December 10, 1967 about 22 miles southwest of Dulce, New Mexico, to ease the flow of natural gas in the area. Yet, Schneider claimed to be a knowledgeable geologist and explosive expert. Schneider was never able to will or willing to prove his allegations, such as showing the entrance to the Dulce base or where tunnels he drilled were located. Phil Schneider repeated information about underground bases that was already in print. Phil Schneider quoted word-for-word word material already written by other researchers. Here's another con artist, Jerry Hinkle, who initial, initially went by Ann West. Here's the alleged photo of the alleged Thomas E. Costello, whose existence has never been proven. Here's the late Paul Benowitz of Albuquerque, New Mexico, who in 1979 first became convinced that there was a Dulce underground base under the Archulator Mesa. Here's John Lear, propagator of alien myths. Here's another con artist, Al Bielik. Here's Branton, also known as Alan B. De Walton, author of Dulce Wars. Here's Tal Levesque, also known as Jason Bishop III, early promoter of the Dulce Bath myth and originator of the underground tunnels map of the United States. Here's Bob Lazar, who was said to have manipulated his buddy, John Lear's insinuation of 1989, that in 1975 there was an altercation between U.S. Delta forces and alien entities in a U.S. underground facility suggesting that it was under Groom Lake, Area 51. In other words, Phil Schneider practically hijacked Bob Lazar's dubious insinuation of 19, uh, 1989 that in 1975 there was an altercation between a U.S. elite military force and alien entities and an underground base suggested to be under Groom Lake Area 51. John Lear credited this allegation to Bob Lazar, who was Lear's good buddy, and then Schneider, in turn, conveniently made himself a protagonist in a new fabricated tale, changing the location to Dulce, New Mexico, and the year to 1975 or 1979, since no one else had done it before. Phil Schneider did not bring forward any new information not already in circulation. Schneider did put on a good show for any newbie to the information. He did tie together many aspects of the material. He did correlate the data in a dramatic story format that flowed well. He put a personal face on all the material and that was compelling. Phil said, I got shot in the chest with one of the aliens' weapons, which was a box on their body that blew a hole in me and gave me a nasty dose of cobalt radiation. I have had cancer because of that. But radioactive cobalt is used for commercial and medical purposes. Exposure to high levels of cobalt can result in lung and heart effects and dermatitis. Phil may have gotten his exposure to cobalt by undergoing radiation therapy treatment of deep-seated cancer, but there are no cobalt weapons except in Flash Gordon stories. 
Later, Phil said, right now I'm dying of cancer that I contracted because of my work for the government. Phil said he had a Rhyolite 38 clearance factor, one of the highest in the world. Rhyolite was a top secret surveillance satellite system developed at TRW. Rhyolite is significant in SIGINT or signal intelligence satellites. Phil was not involved with this type of work. No, he did not have a Rhyolite clearance. Phil Snyder was nothing more than an artistic liar and fabricator. But one thing Schneider succeeded was in staging his own murder as a last resort in order to relieve himself of physical pain and at the same time creating a legacy of immortal personality cult among many of the brainwashed, gullible folks who inhabit the world of ufology.